Hello and welcome to the Locksmith Documentary. This is going to be the first of the first episode in the first season of the Locksmith Documentary. I'm taking the last 12 years and basically reflecting and compiling what I've gone through, how we, how the business was originally started, um, how we got to where we are today, uh, basically going back and documenting that journey and adding little bits and pieces along with continuing uh, the entertainment and the education of what's going on in the industry as we speak. So it's going to be a full, a fully encompassed documentary. And I don't have anybody professionally doing this. Um, I marched to the beat of my own drum and uh, I, I didn't even seek anybody out for this. But my goal is, is that somebody will eventually start to see this and as it gains in popularity, uh, amongst the users and the consumers that actually view this content and information, uh, somebody will come along, the right person will come along and they will enter into this and they will help transform it into what it will be eventually. However, for right now, uh, anytime you want anything done, you just have to go ahead and do it yourselves. And I've done that from day one. It's how I've taken myself, who was just an hourly employee, uh, working a regular job, just being, you know, just another cog in the wheel, if you will, and was able to shift and transform and was given an opportunity to make something more and be something more. I could easily be a locksmith and uh, support my family with that and have the life that we all want, and that would be great, uh, or that would be good, rather. I would rather do something great. I would rather do something that's going to impact people's lives and the next generation of locksmith that's coming up uh, and the next generation of, of people that are coming into the business and the people that are already in the business to maybe look at things a little bit differently and see really what's possible. Uh, the last couple of years, I've just done so much growing and growing and growing that um, this is really going to be the ultimate give back to the community and to the industry. And um, there are other locksmith documentaries out there. Uh, I'll even mention them. Uh, Geo Locksmith uh, has one. It's great. It's great. And there's nobody saying out here that one person can have one or that's already been done. Nope, this is going to be my own individual take on it. And it's going to be it's going to be focused on the trade. It's going to be focused on the industry and not so much me. It's going to be focused on uh, the nuts and bolts and, and how to really make this work. And that's what I'm going after here. Um, the way that we've done this so far, I'm so thankful to all of the sponsors that we've had uh, over the last years. Uh, Phil with Frame and Manufacturing has always supported me and the cause. And so they're going to be a big contributing factor. Um, Greg with um, <clears throat> Pack Blue uh, or the Pack Lock series, and now entering into the electronic access, Pack Blue um, has great options. I mean, they've revolutionized uh, how people look at padlocks now and, and the private sector of that, you know what I mean, or the, the smaller version of that. We all knew who the giants uh, in that web are. And, you know, Packlock was able to just come out of the blue and say, hey, we can do this and we can do it better and we can give the people what they want. These are the companies that I want to work with as sponsors. And I'm never, ever, ever going to take a sponsor that doesn't, you know, perform in what we believe in as well. Uh, if I think it benefits the industry, those are the people that we want to work with and those are the sponsors that we want to highlight and we want to bring them in to this to be able to really see what's possible here. Nothing gets done without funding. No education, no college, no schooling, no vocational schools. Nothing gets done without funding. And what I want to do is show and put that funding to work back for the industry, for the people right here, right now. For people that don't know who I am, uh, we've already started a few things. I've started Wayne's Lock Shop, which is an online uh, training program so people can learn at their own pace. So those people that are in transitional jobs, hey, you, maybe you currently work an hourly job right now, but you want to be a locksmith and own your own business, this is for you. That's exactly what it's tailored for. Um, 
or giving back to Aloha. I teach for the Associated Locksmiths of America. I usually teach for free. I usually don't burden them with any of my expenses. Uh, every now and then there will be some expenses that were unplanned for or that are for the association to get new members for events that I wasn't planning on going to. And, you know, we just really try and give back and give, give, give. Uh, but nothing happens without funding. Um, so that's why we need the sponsors. Uh, Jeff Velosing with Strong Arm has always been extremely supportive. Mo Ali with, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Tri Key Machine and Lock Labs doing amazing things, making incredible machines, uh, absolutely, you know, affordable for the people. Um, you know, just crazy actually taking the machines that used to be considered as you know, import machines and actually giving them American tech support so that people can now afford them. I mean, say what you want about the industry, but not, not everybody could afford uh, a twelve or fifteen thousand dollar, you know, laser cutting machine. And this machine brought a whole new realm of possibilities to people that could no that would never be able to afford that bigger unit or that more expensive unit. These are the kind of innovators that we want to work with in this industry. Uh, we've got. Um, Ron Murray with Frontline Defense. I mean, totally changing the game of how door, you know, hardware and electronics are installed and protected now. Uh, just think about that. You can put a, a $10,000 electronic access system on something, and if something as simple as a pocket knife or a credit card can override that by slipping a latch or, uh, you know, engaging parts that they're not really supposed to have access to due to poor installation, of good products, then what are we doing here? You know what I mean? So the, these are all key pieces. Um, you know, Schlag, a Legion, Asa Abloy, uh, all of these huge companies coming together and really just being able to help support the industry and give back. And, and these are all the people that we're looking to work with, uh, to seek sponsorship with, and to create something that's really going to, I think, change the game. Uh, I'm at a point in my career now where I can actually sit back and kind of look and kind of look at what I've done and what other people have done through a lens and break that down into usable consumable material that will benefit the industry the best. If I can get an interview with Dave McOmey, who's arguably one of the best safe crackers in the whole entire world uh, and, and at the apex of his game. Uh, changing and revolutionizing the industry. These are the people that I want to work with. What makes him tick? What makes him do what he does the best? That's who I want to seek, and that's who I want to talk to. It's not just about learning how to rekey a lock. It's not just about learning how to install something. It's not just about learning how to be a good businessman or woman. It's not just about learning about the, the parts and pieces uh, that we use in our jobs. It's about learning about the entire industry as a whole. The locksmith can't do their job without good parts, without quality parts. The parts aren't here, aren't ever going to be installed if they don't have quality technicians to install them. Um, the manufacturers doing research and development are constantly coming up with new ways. You see a new YouTube video on somebody picking, bypassing, uh, you know, bumping a safe, doing whatever it is you know, bypassing their security that they set up, and all of a sudden it's back to the R&D department to help solve that problem. That will never end. There will always be a new cat and mouse game to play. The cat's going to come up with a new trick. The mouse is going to figure out how to defeat it and get the cheese. There's no way around that. And accepting it, watching it, and seeing it, that's the beauty of what really happens here. So my goal in 2024 is to serve and to bring my take on the best that this industry has to offer. And that's really the best that we have to, the best weapon we have against the scammers anyway. None of the scammers want to be seen. I know it's a huge problem in our industry, but it's a huge problem in every industry. Call up a plumber and ask them if they have scammers or people that take advantage of people in their industry. Call up uh, a, you know, an Uber driver or a, anybody for that matter in any industry. Ours has it much more so. There's a larger percentage of scammer type activity and I'll tell you that the only way we're going to defeat that is by providing quality work be the best educated best business person and best person you can be at your job and that's what you do you supply quality work craftsmanship 
knowledge and information. And that is something that scammers can never do. And that's what I help hope to help inspire people to do, to learn, to get that new class, to go to a trade show, to go out there and get the best education that you can possibly get, to understand as many things as you can get, to give it to you served up on a platter in easy to use and easy to consume, easy to learn and easy to absorb manners, whether it's a short, you know, two minute video on how to do one thing or another, or how to interact with a customer. That's what we're doing and that's what I'm doing and that's what Wayne's Lock Shop is doing for 2020. So if you want to see a really cool experience, join the ride. Nobody's doing this. I got to do everything from the ground up. And I know it's going to be a lot of work, but I'm here and I'm willing to do it until other people want to join and start helping carry that load because it takes one visionary to see what's possible. And once someone else can see that vision that I have in my head and they see how beautiful it is, there's more people that are going to want to jump on board. So to the people that have supported me and sponsored me for this long, thank you. We definitely appreciate it. I wouldn't be here. This wall wouldn't be here. The people that we've touched wouldn't be here without that. And I look to do what most consider impossible and I really look forward to seeing what we can possibly do in the future. Thanks, stay tuned, and make sure you subscribe. You're not going to want to miss any of this stuff. It's going to be great. Thanks for watching and here I'll give you a little sample of what I'm envisioning right after this. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, here we are again. Uh, just had a lockout and had to save Christmas. Uh, this lady, her all of her Christmas stuff was locked in a Oop. <clears throat> it was locked in a uh, storage unit and it's a sergeant deadbolt so we picked on it for a little while i'm doing this in between calls i've got other calls to go run so i can't stay here forever and i know picking a sergeant is going to take a long time so i gave it the usual five ten minutes uh wasn't getting a whole lot of feedback so we decided we'll just pull the hinge pins pull the whole door off get this mom access to her Christmas presents so she can help her kids uh, and get Christmas ready to go and get everything set up from there. It's that simple. Now, the problem comes in, she needed a key made for it, and when we pulled the cylinder apart, it's not really meant to be serviceable. There's a roll pin that goes through a tailpiece to try and take everything apart, so you'd have to service everything from the top. I don't have time to deal with that right now. I don't even have the right key blank, the right sergeant key blank. It's not an RE, it's not an S22, and it's not the other one that I have too. Okay, let's see if we can get the lights to stay on for crying out loud. Um, so, my, but she needs to be able to lock that door because there's no other lock or latch or anything to even hold the door shut for crying out loud. So... My solution was, I'm in an emergency mode right now. This was an emergency that was dumped on top of me. Uh, I simply don't have the key blank for it. It's a very oddball one. I'll have to get another one at the shop or do something different. And, um, man, that is really annoying. And um, so my solution was, there is a cap. That's the only way this can be serviced is all through the top. So I dumped all the pins and just showed her, look, you can lock it with a screwdriver tonight. That's the best I can do for you in an emergency situation after hours, right here, right now at night. You can see it's dark outside. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll either get a different cylinder, the correct cylinder, or we'll get the correct key blank. I'll find one at the shop or whatever. So that's pretty much what happened here. Uh, with this particular call. But always be willing to think outside the box. If you can't pick the lock and the lock is the only way in, look at the hinges. If the hinges are not an option, look for something else. Look for a different way in. I did not have to drill this lock cylinder. That is the most important part. We still have a serviceable cylinder that can be uh, worked on at a later point in time. So think outside the box, save Christmas, and the locksmith industry saves Christmas yet again. Have a great day. Here you can see that tailpiece is pinned with a roll pin and you can see where the top is serviceable. All right, so for this lockout we had a um, sergeant. Uh, didn't have very much time to pick on that. We'll give it a couple minutes, but then we just pulled the hinges out, whoosh, door came off, and we were able to get past and get inside and save Christmas. So, cool stuff. Thanks for watching. Here she is, ready to access her Christmas toys. 
This episode is brought to you by Frame and Manufacturing and Blue Dog Keys. Alrighty, here we are. We got a uh, safe to open. Um, should be a pretty easy one. A uh, simple lock pick. Um, just the first call of the day, so I'll we'll see how that goes. But just one of those cheap little crappy uh, Amazon safes. Um, if you think those things are secure, you can pick them with a paper clip. A lot of them. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them. So just kind of keep that in mind, and we'll see what happens and what goes on with this one. Stay tuned. With this particular unit, they have actually changed their key design to more of a side cut key. Like you see here, this is not the actual key, but it's something similar, so it's not as easily picked. We were able to get the safe open through other means. Our next sponsor is Big Red Safe Locks. This is their Group 2 Mechanical Combination Safe Lock, and this is my preferred go-to for replacements on safes. Alrighty, so today we've got to do some maintenance. Uh, PM is what I refer to it as, or preventative maintenance for a high-security jewelry safe. Um, just basically going in there and uh, uh, people don't realize that a safe is a mechanical box it has a lot of moving parts in it if you have an electronic lock I usually recommend that you replace them every five to seven years in a commercial setting every seven to ten years in a um, residential setting depending on what lock you have and uh, just go in there and lubricate everything tighten up all the bolts uh, make sure none of the pins are coming off track any parts that show wear uh, tighten up all the screws, set screws. There's a lot of moving parts in here that can actually cause a lockout. So uh, just going over everything, lubricating everything, taking care of it. Think of it like a tune-up and a, or an oil change for your car. Uh, just because it's a safe in a metal box and doesn't have an engine doesn't mean it doesn't have moving parts. So that's what we're going to go do. Here you can see all of the intricate moving parts inside this Say if you can see that the handle is connected to that cogged wheel, which allows the bolts to move up and down. You can see they're on kind of a sliding pattern. That sliding pattern is where your lubrication is needed. You can see that there's grease and lubrication on all of those contact points. Being able to see all of these individual moving parts function together is what allows this safe to operate. Now we've got a larger spring down below. That spring is helping move the bolt work back and forth and assist as the bolt work is retracted. You can also see that this little piece of metal right here was, one for, was from one of the interior blocks. That is a tailpiece that could have very easily caused them several thousand dollars worth of uh, safe opening that may have needed to be done on this particular application here. You'll also notice that glass plate if this safe is attacked or somebody tries to drill into the safe they will crack that glass plate much like the Italian job. Yes this safe is a very high security safe and if that glass plate is cracked it will then fire off remote relockers that will then render the safe useless and remain locked until a professional safe technician like myself can come in and undo those particular devices so that the safe can actually be opened. A lot of people really don't know how intricate some of these safes can actually be. They just think it's a big stationary metal box and that it never requires service. This is a clear indicator that service is absolutely necessary to perform optimal maintenance on these so that it works when you need it to work. I want to just take a few minutes and thank the people who have helped me. Uh, Locksmith Ledger International Magazine, a wonderful resource for education, GKL Products, Makers of the Hinge Doctor, My Pages, Wayne's Lock Shop and LockReference.com, NSO, is a wonderful resource for safe information. Frame and Manufacturing and Blue Dog Keys for all of your key machines and key blank needs. Big Red Safe Locks is my preferred safe lock replacement and along with Pack Blue, Keyless Security, wonderful technology happening over there. Strong Arm Safe Drills and Drill Rigs are necessary for any safe technician. The Triton Plus Key Machine is our staple mark in all of our vans and vehicles. The entire Aloha board and frame and manufacturing along with frontline defense full length latch guards that protect your doors better than anything else we've seen on the market see you next time thanks for watching